What is a constitutional crisis? Would you know it if we were in one? To understand if we are in one today, we have to look back at our history. But first, a definition. Constitutional crisis, noun. A problem or conflict in the function of a government that the political constitution or other fundamental governing law is perceived to be unable to resolve. Let's look back at crisis one, the nullification crisis, 1828 to 1833. South Carolina declares national tariffs would be null and void, forcing a constitutional showdown between state and federal governments. President Andrew Jackson is none too happy. Congress is uh, concerned about um, the economy and the tariffs are uh, perceived to help manufacturing in the North and in the West. Uh, and Southerners, though, uh, perceive the tariffs as being uh, economically oppressive. Just as the 1828 election is about to occur, Congress passes another tariff law, jacking up the standard rate to 50% think about that. Imagine if everything you purchase that was manufactured or grown in a foreign country had a 50% tax on it. At this point, uh, South Carolina had had enough. In the fall of that year, they passed an ordinance of nullification. They declared that the uh, tariff was no law, that it was not binding on the state of South Carolina, and it wasn't going to be enforced. While that was going on, um, President Jackson uh, issued a, what's called the Nullification Proclamation. He said, you've been misled by your political leaders. You cannot prevent enforcement of a federal law in South Carolina. Nullification is treason, and I have sworn an oath to uphold the Constitution and laws of the United States. He also asked Congress to pass what came to be called a force bill. Now, the force bill would empower the president to use the army to enforce the law. People actually thought that Jackson would go attack South Carolina, that there would be a civil war in the United States. Fortunately, Henry Clay steps into the scene, you know, the, the great compromiser. Henry Clay negotiates a compromise that everybody agrees to. Ultimately, it gives South Carolina and the southern states some tariff relief over the next 10 years. It's controversial because uh, by now we've had several efforts to assert um, a kind of radical states' rights position. Um, the radical states' rights position is actually at odds with um, uh, much of what we see in the Constitution. Does the federal government have primacy or do the states have primacy? The political problem was dealt with, but the fundamental issue of whether or not the federal government is going to have absolute control or whether the states still have a part to play, that has not been resolved and really today hasn't been resolved at this point either. And then we have crisis number two, the death of William Henry Harrison, April 4th, 1841. In this case, shortly after inauguration, William Henry Harrison dies in office. Should his vice president finish out his term? Should a special election be called? The constitution is less than helpful. So what happens? Uh, Tyler immediately starts to behave like he's a lawfully elected president. And he takes the presidential oath of office and he just starts running the country as if there's no doubt about this. And he's able to sort of create a kind of precedent that we followed ever since. Tyler's detractors uh, only uh, considered himself an acting president, um, which meant that he wasn't considered popularly elected as far as uh, his uh, detractors were concerned. It, it would have also meant that they should have been uh, trying to uh, immediately schedule an election. Uh, to fill the, the presidency as soon as possible. Tyler believed that the moment he took the uh, Oval Office, he was entitled to finish out uh, Harrison's term. Ultimately, there's too much of a uh, temptation to basically just seize power, and whoever has the political clout at the moment is gonna be able to do that. And we see this all the time. Usually it's through usage, through what James Madison called liquidation of constitutional provisions that their meanings are established. I believe that any time that there is any gray area, instead of simply setting a precedent, simply letting those in power decide what their powers are going to be, that we should turn to the amendment process. We passed the 25th Amendment uh, after uh, JFK's assassination. By then we also had a kind of set of lingering concerns, for example, what if the president becomes 
uh, mentally ill. A number of these concerns um, started to become raised, and so the 25th Amendment was enacted to clarify that the vice president would always be the one to assume power if the president either dies or is somehow incapacitated. And finally, crisis three, the 1876 presidential election, November 7th, 1876. Voting irregularities force Congress to appoint a special panel to determine the election results. Seven Republicans, seven Democrats, and a justice. What could go wrong? It was a highly contentious election. Tilden was accused of uh, all sorts of things, and they called him corrupt. They accused him of being riddled with syphilis. They called him a drunk. There were also accusations of voter intimidation. Armed white citizens wanted to sort of push the Republicans out of those remaining southern states. We're in the midst of Reconstruction. Many states in the South are still effectively under martial law. They're being run by the, by the U.S. military. So uh, there were a lot of, uh, there's a lot of gray in, in all of this. Instead of allowing each state to determine the results of its own election, it got thrown to this special panel. And what Congress did was to appoint a 15-person commission to try to resolve all of these issues and decide who would be the next president of the United States. And then there was going to be this last person, this 15th person that at least a number of congressmen hoped would be a somewhat more neutral figure. That person ended up becoming Supreme Court Justice Joseph Bradley. When finally the commission took its vote, a uh, Supreme Court Justice who had been thought to be neutral but actually wasn't uh, voted Republican, and that meant that Hayes ended up getting to, to become the president. Eventually, a compromise is hammered out, and this is what um, ends up resolving the crisis is that um, a number of promises are made uh, to Im uh, help improve the economy of the South. This will all happen if the Democrats accept that the contested votes will all go to Hayes. There's an uh, understanding as part of this deal that the federal government will withdraw what's left of the troops from places like Louisiana. The standard version of the outcome in 1876 has been that there was a trade between northern and southern whites. In reality, this is not what happened. Grant had already removed significant military assets from the South, so it actually was not a product of the Commission's work that Reconstruction was brought to a final end. Conclusion. Historical crises, lingering effects. If we're going to have rule of law, then we have to have a firm, concrete foundation, a constitutional foundation that does not shift and it does not move. In all of these crises, we start to see what happens when we don't adhere to that foundation. People have made good faith arguments in recent years that in various scenarios, we were in constitutional crises. I think depending how one understands ongoing events in 2019, it's arguable that we are in more than one kind of constitutional crisis. I don't think that we're living in the most divisive time in history. I think we have always had divisive times. The more you try to centralize, the more that divisiveness is going to be exacerbated. Uh, when we can decentralize, it's easier to get along and live together. Anyone who uh watches uh, uh, this documentary, thinks hard about these episodes, uh, will hopefully come away with the sense that uh, constitutional principles aren't uh, self-executing, uh, they're not self-evident, even though we like saying that they are. Um, instead, they are uh, enforced through struggle, the willingness of someone to kind of lay down, um, uh, to draw a line. Uh, to fight for principle. We can only know the content of a principle uh, through this struggle and how people react to it afterward.